So maybe Diana Taurasi was still a little raw after a terrible call, cost her school, UConn, a shot at a last shot against Caitlin Clark's Iowa. But this is what Diana Taurasi said on ESPN, and I quote, reality is coming. You look superhuman playing against some 18-year-olds, <laughs> but you're going to come play with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. There is going to be a transition period where you're going to have to give yourself some grace as a rookie. Keyshawn, I've heard these kind of words from you before. Are, are, is this just harsh truth, or was that just the Yukon in her speaking? Uh, no, it's, it's it. Well, you didn't hear those words from me about her. No, you heard them from about other players. <laughs> I have. in general. Does this apply to her? Absolutely, 100%. Did it apply to me as a rookie? 100%. It applies to all rookies. What you're lying about? Thank you. There's the baby seat and the. Oh yeah, back, oh yeah. Because you got seat. you got grown men mm -hmm. when you're talking about professional sports, with full beards, with child seats in their SUVs mm -hmm. that may get cut next week. Mm -hmm. So they gonna be out to tear your head off. Now in this situation, you have grown professional women like Diana said that that feel a certain way. They are gonna be up in you. Mm -hmm. You think about think about. Uh, Patrick Beverly, what he did to Lonzo Ball yes. when he saw him, he was up on like you. Yeah, that's for mm -hmm. you. That's gonna be the same that's intensity. That's for his dad. Yeah, that's for his dad. Lavar. That, that's yeah. gonna be the same intensity, Rachel. There's no question about it. Will she prevail? Most likely. She gonna hit a wall here, there in the pros. She gonna run up against them, them girls that could just go. I heard this from some other. WNBA players, the same exact thing. Like, oh, she think it's going to be just, you're going to be raining threes off our heads. It was like, nah, it's not going to happen like mm -hmm. that. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. I went through it my rookie year, okay, where I had once, I figured it out, and the game slowed down. The rest was history. When was that? That was probably go going into my second year. After, after my first year, that offseason, mini camps, summer, then it clicked. Then once it clicked, that second year, it wasn't nothing else to talk about. And that'll be the same thing with her. And she may hit the ground running. But think about all the NBA guys, the professional guys that come into leagues as rookies. Mm. They, they stub their toe. They try to figure it out. And then eventually you see a game or two from them. You go, oh, man, they can go. Then you see a game or two. Then they struggle. You look at Wimby. Wimby came over, hadn't played in professional league over in Europe. He was like, man, that dude, come on, man, get in underneath come the on. basket. Come Why down here. shoot that half court? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, dude is giving you crazy numbers and stuff because he eventually figured it out. And that'll go for her as well. Mm -hmm. and, and a little bit of that, sometimes people get tired of hearing about you and who you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of that, I don't want to say jealousy, it's just the, the envy in what it is, Rachel, I guess, so to speak. I'm not sure it's envy. I don't think this is hating. No, either. it's not hating. I, I go down the, the quote from Diana. She says it's harder in the pros than in college. Yes, yes. that's true. Yes, it's it very is, true. right? She says greatness eventually translates no matter what. That that's is true. Confidence in Caitlin Clark. Yes, that is also true. She says you need time to adjust as a rookie. I myself needed time to adjust yes. as a rookie. Also true. Tell me the lie. Show me the lie there. I, I had a long, in-depth conversation with Kelsey Plum who came in as the number one overall pick, huge expectations on her after what she did in college. She had a very hard time her rookie year. Her numbers weren't what they were supposed to be. And just mentally, she talked extensively about the weight on her. She, she, she said that it just it, she had some very dark times mentally uh -huh. because of all the pressure on her and the weight and the expectations. Mm. I'm not saying that's going to happen to Caitlin Clark, but Kelsey made it through and, and has a title now. And I expect Caitlin Clark to, like Diana said, face tougher competition, have to figure out a way to adjust, and I expect Caitlin Clark to adjust. I do but too. this idea that because Diana didn't get up there and wasn't all touchy feely and, <laughs> and and all this stuff, Diana's an athlete, man, and, and Caitlin Clark's an athlete, and and there is not expectation among the men's side for them to to put welcome baskets out for yeah. the rookies. Diana shouldn't have to do that for her either. Yeah, mm. no, she's got to find her way to the stadium. What the highways look like, where she's supposed to be there, shoot around. Yeah. She's got a lot that she has to endure. It. But I do think there was at least a hint of UConn speaking in Diana's oh, sure. assessment. Just a hint. She's competitive. She's extremely competitive. And I think she feels some rivalry with all the attention that Caitlin has gotten that she didn't get coming out of UConn when she put up 
equally staggering numbers, maybe not all-time greatest numbers. Well, that's why I say people yeah. don't really... They don't want to keep... You know, like professional players, I'm going to just give it to you real. No matter what people think, they have some envy in the beginning stages of it. Yeah. She's coming in as the celebrated one. Oh. And they're like, well, wait a minute, hold what, on. What, I got what, four what championships. But, but yeah. wait, is that envy or is that just re well, realism? If you get back to that word reality, right? Well, I don't think I it's mean, envy. It's, I don't think it's jealousy. And I, well, it's, I am... not, it's not... I, I don't know the exact word. Mm -hmm. Y'all way more educated than me, so y'all would have the exact word. I call, yeah. I call it... It's a good word. Yeah, well, that that one too. Word. That's twice now <laughs> in the history of undisputed. I would just seriously, though, say that there's, there's some jealousy and envy when somebody comes into sure. a league yep. hyped up as high as they are, even though she's good. But again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it jealousy and envy. I would call it, hey, here is what has happened. Here is here. When we were talking about the greatest of all time, right? The fact that you'd even be having the conversation about Caitlin Clark as the greatest of all time, when Brianna Stewart did what she did, when Cheryl Swoops did what she did, mm -hmm. when Cheryl Miller did what she did, when Candace mm -hmm. Parker, Diana Taurasi herself did what she did, and people are just like, mm -hmm. oh, she's the greatest of all time. And we've, we've already heard that. Yeah. I, I, I just think that the players in the league are saying, wait a, wait a minute, I don't think it's jealousy. I, I think got it's it. just remember us. I think she's going to surprise those veteran players in the <laughs> league. I think she's going to be really good. She won't average 30 a game, but can she average 20 a game? Yes, she can, because she is a creating three-point shooter. She doesn't have to catch it and shoot it coming off picks. Although, I will say, I don't think her college coach called enough double picks for her because I don't know if you noticed the game the, the, the game against Connecticut on Friday night. She goes 0 for 6 in the first half, and at halftime they decided to run a play for her to start the second half, and it was a double screen that she came off and finally got an open look and just buried it. Well, they didn't do much of that. They'd have kind of a halfway pick out at the top. You know, Stolke had come out there, and so she just... Only, she, she's creating it on her own because she has got a handle. Her passing will translate. I think her distance shooting will translate. Can she do what Candace Parker did in 2008? Be the MVP Boy. and the rookie in the same year? Ooh, boy, that's a mouthful. You also that's have to remember she's going to a team that's picking her for a reason. Yeah. You talk about yeah. coaches oh, going yeah. to bad teams for yeah, a reason. Bad team. yeah. Number one picks go to bad teams for a reason. All right, up next, do you give Purdue any shot tonight against UConn?